when we first see George, you know, the, the, the son. Georgia. Yeah, yeah. Georgia you, and, and yourself, there's um, grief. There's grief in the family and there's like a breakdown in communication, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that, is that, is that something that you found when you read the script? Yeah, actually, it's been a strange trajectory because the first time I read the script was years before, as with all independent films, it had fallen apart, actually, yeah. once. So, so I'd sort of, um, um, I think it had changed a bit. So, so you know, I've, it's been around for a while. Um, so I can't really remember the first thing that uh, hit me about it. But um, I, my middle boy, it's, it's a tribute, actually. My contribution is a tribute to my middle son, who's a Man U fanatic. Oh. Um, so the idea of me doing a film up in Manchester near Old Trafford and having boys on set all day playing football was just like, yeah, yeah, you can not put me to bed for a few nights, that's fine, as long as I can come. Right, that's it, no more football. Training lads for life, is that your motto? It's not some pet project, he's my son. You stop being a proper mum after my dad died. Erica, the character, could have clearly been just one dimensional mm. yet you brought so many layers to her was that already in the script or was that was that something that you 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 would work on my personally creation. I mean entirely yeah yeah um, no I think it, I think it was a beautifully calibrated script actually so um, that that was yeah and I mean it's you know the movie is about the boy and about his relationship with Matt Busby that should be the story so she's very much there's a sort of another tension, obviously. It's a sort of triangle, really, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, I, and I thought he was great. I thought Jack was fantastic. Um, never acted before. Yeah. I was going to ask you about that because mm. there are some really powerful scenes yeah. between the pair yeah. of you and yeah. very emotional. Yeah. And had him not being an actor, how mm. did you work with him um, and nurture? The well, actually, um, the director's brother uh, is took it upon himself to be the sort of you know acting coach for the kids, and I think he was really effective. I think he sort of got quite a good relationship with. It's it's hard as an actor to, even if it's a child, to direct the person you're working with because I think you know, you know, genders that then get slightly muddy. So I think it's much better that it's a sort of third party who's doing that stuff. So but obviously. You know, just technical stuff of oh, listen, look over that shot, look, but then you're being shot on that one. You were, you know, obviously. But um, he was, he was lovely. He was a really sweet kid, actually, and but quite quiet, quite you know, introspective. Not your actor child at all. Um, predominantly a footballer, and I, I think that was absolutely the right choice that they made. That it, they got that passion. I think comes across in spades. His, you know, almost all you see is the crown of that blonde head just. <laughs> On the ball, and I, I know that as a mother of a football nut, it's that's what you see, you know. And then this, this dribbling ball that you keep stumbling over. So all of that was very familiar and, and really fun to play. Actually, is it? And that also captures the essence of Sir Matt Busby as well, because you know he was nurturing young talent, and for yeah. them to then use young footballers yeah. to be in this film yeah. just seems so appropriate, no, really. A lovely circular kind of, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Every first year student will blast, bash or blow every brass instrument until we find the right one for them. Imagine our Georgie at Lancashire Grammar School. Is there any football at the school? You've got to wear some great costumes as Fantastic. well. I know, and I love the music. Oh, it's so brilliant. Oh, it's great, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, no, it was a real joy, and it was just a very quick in and out. They shot it so fast, so they didn't have many chances in terms of getting, you know, the right takes, and um, and I think they ran out of money at one point. So, so it was a struggle, but as all the independent films are, so I hope people are kind to it. Is it is it something as well when you're going back to making an independent film, coming from working as well with big budgets? There's something, there's a real kind of team effort. Um, again, Very capturing the spirit so. of yeah, the yeah, film. Yeah, yeah, uh, wartime kind of. Uh, yeah, yeah, coming together. Um, absolutely. Yeah. School. Just look at this. I'm going to sign us up. So where are we going to find the 21 quid to sign up anyway? I'll sort it. Got my the film also, one of the big themes, is about following your dream, uh, being an actor as well. Does that, can you relate to that as well? Never giving up and always following the yeah, passion? Uh, very much so. Very, very much so. And that's definitely 
the trajectory that I feel my life has, has sort of taken and my boys' lives are, you know, if there's one thing I want to, um, you know, pass on to them, it's we're being stopped. Um, <laughs> no, no, sorry, there's one thing, you know, I'd like to, in terms of a sort of baton passing exercise, it would be that, it would be, um, you know, to then, to thine own heart be true, just, just follow your heart's desire, yeah. you know, yeah. And we, you touched upon the great accent that you... Oh, that you well, my it's a cheat. My dad's from, he was from Lancashire and I spent a lot of time in my youth. My parents were divorced, so I spent a lot of time up there with him in, in and around that area. So, yeah. and is it when you're preparing for a part like that where you've got you've got an accent do you concentrate on mastering the the, the accent first or is it that you concentrate on the dialogue mm. getting that first and then you add the, the the accent to it I think the character and, and the sort of objective of that character what their struggle is and interestingly a lot of the other stuff kind of folds in and if it's well written and it's written sort of in the dialect well, it kind of lends itself you know to it's hard to do it without it, in a funny way. It becomes um, a tool and uh, a sort of aid rather than a, an, an encumbrance or something that you feel is an imposition, yeah. I haven't seen ball control like that, not since the Brazilians. I won't call the police if you let me manage your team. You crack his granddad. You can't just make yourself manager. I can. It's called blackmail. With regards to Samat Busby, is there anything that you've learned about him from making well, this film? I, to be honest, rather shamingly, because my dad is, was a fanatical Man U fan, and I spent a lot of my youth in Old Trafford, my God, hiding actually under the benches. You know, it was very different football in those days. There weren't that many little girls sitting there. Um, and I just remember hiding under the bench every time I knew... The, the, when the goal was about to be scored, or you, you know, the, the temperature in the stadium would sort of rise and you'd see guys starting to stand up, about to kind of go, ah, whatever, or, you know, just what I remember is the noise. I was so small, and I just remember the noise, and I would hide under the bench. You'd I'd be like, oh, please don't score a goal, because it's going to get really noisy again. So that was my, <laughs> isn't that awful? That was my only experience of football, was just noise. and. Every time my dad got a girlfriend, I'd be so happy because it would mean I wouldn't have to go to the football. I could go and do something with her instead. So, yeah, it's diametrically opposite to the experience of this movie and, um, and yeah, my own son's obsession. But, I mean, I'm better with football now than I used to be. There's only one way to make sure it goes in the back of the net. You have to have a belief. I want to win the goal. I want to win it for Dad. If you believe, you could score with your eyes shut. 